This is Rowan here and I want to share with you my year in review so you can see what it's like behind the scenes of living life like a professional ultimate frisbee player. Now 2023 was a special year in many regards. First, first Team USA appearance, uh, club national championship, and also many small things along the way. So let's dive right back in. The story starts at the end of 2022 when Truck Stop lost to Bravo in the national championship. From that moment on, myself and many others in DC were very committed to making 2023 the best year possible. One of my secret weapons as an ultimate Frisbee player and competitor is to go away in the winter for a little bit of a boot camp to get ready for an upcoming season. Now in the past, I've done these in Panama, you know, working with Felipe and company down there. But ever since the pandemic, my cousin moved to Hawaii. That's Dallas Johnson, that's my guy. He's an avid disc golfer now. But what happens is we link up in January for two to three weeks preseason. And that's when I'll really start to hit the ground running for my training preparations. In and out of those training at the beach, I put on the cleats for the first time in 2023 there for a special Goldtimate Championship. These are the stories that make traveling as an Ultimate Frisbee player amazing. I got invited to a showcase game. Shout out Jason Anthinian. He organizes the Goldtimate World in Oahu and it's blooming, blossoming. So there was a, a showcase game. They had a drone out, live coverage, and Ended up, I ended up losing. Uh, you know, that was a heartbreaking game, but that was, again, the first time I was actually cutting and playing Ultimate for the whole year. Uh, looking forward to that game again. Shout out to Oahu Ultimate. After that trip finishes up, you know, some disc golfing and some Ultimate training, it's now on to February for the DC Breeze tryouts. We always do double a weekend, so four days of tryouts to pick the new team. Of course, the Breeze also in 2022, heartbreaking loss right in my face when you know Jack threw that pass to, to Ben Yacht, ending another Breeze season. So we knew we, we wanted to, to make the best team possible, especially knowing that this was Daryl's last year coaching the professional world. And, and honestly, his last year coaching, we wanted to go out on top. Right after tryouts finished, I got a really cool direct message on Instagram that essentially was asking my availability to come out as a guest of honor for a Egyptian Open tournament in Cairo. Now, a lot of times these things don't work out because my schedule is, is usually packed from April to October, but there was a weekend, this was actually in March 1819, that I said, okay, maybe this could work. They flew me out to just kind of participate in this tournament, not as a player, but just more check it out, see how the MENA, Middle East, North Africa region was playing ultimate, enjoy the Egyptian Open. It was cool, we got to go to the pyramids on the first day. They took amazing care of us and yeah, a really special, special moment. They made this cool little poster. I don't know if it'll zoom in or, or if you can see it, but essentially um, what, what I did was I would show up to the tournament and just watch some games. I did a couple of wind throwing clinics it was on the Sahara Desert, so there's a lot of wind. And then at night, I would do a couple of seminars, one on individual development, one on team culture. And it was a really unique atmosphere uh, at a sports club. There was teams from all over. I think Lebanon was there, Kuwait was there. Um, other, there was probably four or five countries represented, as well as the local Egyptian clubs. So it was always cool. That was my first time in that scene. Definitely look forward to coming back. Um, but I was able to sneak away before the season for one, one little international trip, which you'll soon see are one of my favorite parts of this job. Now coming back to DC from Egypt, getting ready for the upcoming pro season, we, we have been sneaking away to the TEP Torneo Eterno Primavera, uh, Everlasting Spring Tournament down in Colombia. We did that back to back years, 21 and 22 which is a cool preseason tune-up tournament for the Breeze. We, we get a roster of about 20, 25 going down and just get to participate in Colombian Ultimate, which is something I love ever since I've connected with 
you know, of course, Felipe in Panama and then Venezuela and Warao. Uh, always loved the Latin scene. So getting a chance to play a local tournament there. I've done DV in Bogota, but Medellin is sweet. It's a beautiful stadium. You have the mountains and, and the houses surrounding you. And it's just honestly a little bit of fun too. We, we go there, we play really hard and, you know, we get pushed, but also is a chance to kind of hang out with your teammates and start to get to meet everybody before the long season uh, officially starts. Craziest part of TEP this year was there was a, a miscommunication on what field we were playing and maybe the time too. So we ended up going to semifinals against double wide. We literally are running onto the field while they're seven on the line, like waiting to pull. I think we asked for a little moments, moments peace, moments break. I don't think they gave it to us. I'm just saying. And, you know, I'm like, we're fine. Let's just go out there. First point, I just completely dropped like an under wide open. And they go up like five in the first half. But we huge comeback uh, and get, a, I think, a universe point win to send us to the showcase game against the Empire. That game was, was nice. Uh, there was a little rain delay. There was a little break. Honestly, our play wasn't too good. There was turnovers on both sides. It was kind of an anticlimactic final after a fun tournament. But you know what? Empire comes away with the first win of the season. Coming back from TEP and another major moment uh, in my season is the college program, American University Dirty Ladies, that I had been coaching maybe six, seven years by this point. We end up winning the section for the first time ever, uh, like a 15 to five win against Georgetown. And then we go to regionals. We finished fourth place in the region, a, a program high. And even in the game to go to the game to go, we were competing, I think it's eight, six in the first half. One of the hard parts about coaching the college is I think the last day, Sunday at regionals, Finished up, got fourth place, hopped in a car and sprinted right to a Philadelphia Phoenix home game. So it is a bit of a hustle, even when this is kind of your lifestyle. It is behind the scenes, like, you know, you're coaching all day and you go straight to a pro game. Speaking of the grind, we've now entered May where it starts to be pro and club and coaching and all of these kind of spots that you just have to find, you know, free time. I think Alex Crew, our coach on Truck Stop and assistant on The Breeze, counted up all of our practices and there was over 100 this year, which is kind of crazy. We went early, we started early with The Breeze in February, of course going all the way to October with Truck Stop. So 100 days of practice or tournaments can be long and you start to feel it in kind of that May, June once the, the club picks up. For me personally, since I was able to get to Hawaii and start my training early, I had been getting ahead of these long nagging injuries that you know, both of my hamstrings had been kind of impacted. 2021, I was barely moving. 2022, you know, I still had to wear two hamstring sleeves on both sides, so four hamstring sleeves at club nationals. And even though I was you know, able to walk away, club player of the year, uh, it was just still these injuries that are kind of impacting what I can do. So this season I get ahead of them early and I, I even am able to get a full workout in after an early June or late May Toronto rush game, like play rush and then lift. And I'm like, wow, I'm starting to get my body back. I'm starting to feel like, you know, this, this athlete again. And all of a sudden, in late in uh, early june we play the flyers on friday night joe white goes off for like 10 goals i try to guard him you know i think i did pretty good on him but he still got me for like five or six of those goals um, and that night me johnny tyler monroe and aj are all on the beach worlds team that you know this tournament has been taking like three years at this point and we go all to a practice weekend so we get in the car Friday night, we drive four hours to Virginia Beach, and we get to Team USA Beach, beach tryouts. We're all in this tiny Airbnb with like maybe three bed spots. All these players, you know, Antoine's cooking, he's over there, me, Jimmy, Chris, all on the floor in this little tiny corner. It's, it's unbelievable stuff. But anyways, the, the second hour into practice, when we, our first scrimmage, I just make a normal undercut, and Antoine is trying to defend it at a different angle. 
and just like our feet kind of get tangled up and I think he goes out for an injury sub I kind of finish the point and then go out and then within two or three hours like I just couldn't walk it was it was scary and I'm a little bit worried then the next then I sleep and I wake up and the next day like I like still can't put any pressure on this foot and I'm like whoa like did I just break my foot I, I'm googling what is how long am I gonna be out I'm like I just got healthy and when I go back to see Dr. Pete MacArthur local legend ultimate player a good ultimate player who's like the sports doctor for the, the Nationals or the Redskins or all these all these pro teams he says it's not broken, probably just a sprain, which is good news at first, but it turns out to be like a really impactful injury for me on the field. All of a sudden, I'm like trying to play defense at this point, but now Daryl and the captains are like, you know, I can't even stop, so I can't decelerate. So what's happening now is I'm trying to play defense. And of course, I'm playing handler defense because there's a hole in our roster. Like, that's where they wanted to put me. So I'm chasing all these squirrels around. And I think in a Montreal game, I come out with this injured foot and I just get this guy who's just running and stopping and starting. And it's just bad. I'm, I mean, I look horrible, like on film. I can probably show some clips here. But then it's like, okay, well, that was the, the experiment that I was going to play defense over. I'm not even playing good defense. So they think moving me to offense would be better for my foot because I can control this, this injury from there. Um, meanwhile, the training has completely changed. Now I can't run, I can't work out, I can't lift. So I basically play, rest all week, get the foot okay, and it just turns into this bad spiral. So for four to six weeks, I go to offense. The offense still doesn't look that great. My, my offense does not look great. I'm turning the disc over. I'm the foot's still injured and after this what what happens is the lack of training I think we go to this New York game and I play through the foot but since I'm not training now I had some of like a re a reoccurring hamstring strain in that game and now I have the foot injury but the hamstrings are acting up again and all this work that I put in I felt was just completely gone and that's how kind of the pro season ended up for me, where I was pretty healthy, but just not fully ready to go. And that that hurts my game where I can't create separation or I can't run. Now players can just front me and it's just over. So honestly, a little bit of a lackluster uh, regular season for, for me on the pro scene that just that ailing foot injury really set me back a little bit more than I think a lot of people knew. The one silver lining with kind of the injury and really took away time on the training and going out and throwing and working out. But what I had been doing is I linked up with Jack Williams. This is a big thing for, for this year. Uh, and we put together kind of a training program for players looking to learn how to practice. So we created this drill library with like 50 drills. We send out a week. Um, a weekly workout and all the drills on the side if you want a second and it kind of gave this is a long-term dream I had to make this this program so I linked up with Jack uh, in June and we just went we shot some drills we did some some work together and that was super fun uh, getting out and, and seeing him and kind of sending this out into the world so the Excel ultimate training program was, was super cool and Again, I've been working on it for years and I finally was able to launch it with Jack's help. So if you want to train with Jack, um, we'd love to have you in, in the program. On that trip too, I was uh, in Brooklyn where everybody lives. I suppose I went over to, to link up with Jimmy Mickle for another special treat in this season to sit down and hear his ultimate story. Um, Johnny Malks and I have been doing a podcast now for a year and a half, one throw at a time which has honestly been kind of my favorite content right now to make. Just really hang out with Johnny, talk ultimate, talk team culture, talk goofy stuff. So I was able to link up with, with Jimmy on that podcast. Everybody wants to hear from Jimmy. So we, we got his story 
put that on YouTube and um, on our Spotify. So if you didn't get a chance for, for that interview, highly recommend it. Definitely one of the best memories of the past season. As June fades into July, we start getting ready for the AUDL playoffs. This time, when we get past Boston in the playoffs to get to New York, it's crazy because we go up to New York and right before the game, we found out that Babbitt and Lithio, Jeff Babbitt and John Lithio, both like their top O-line deep cutters and just impact the game so heavily, are both out. So we Ben Yacht's going to come over to offense and there's going to be different matchups. So we honestly are like, don't know what to think. This is just an hour before the game, all these little mini changes. And then the game starts and New York is just playing like perfect. It, it's incredible. I think throughout the whole game, they only turn it over four times. And yeah, all those changes, like we did not think that would make them a better team, especially no Babbitt, but they, they played it perfect. So heartbreaking game there in the season. We just never got it going. The crazy part about this ultimate and the pro club game is we lost on a Saturday maybe. And then that Tuesday, we already had a truck stop practice. Like there was no rest this year. So it's a, it's a weird feeling going to that practice. It's like almost the same team. There's a few differences, but now it's, hey, like we all just like had our season end, but oh, we're in this other season. But as soon as the pro season ended, I texted the leadership. I need significant time off because right now I'm just playing catch up with these injuries and with, with the demands of the schedule, like I'll never get ahead and I'll just limp into the club season and the postseason. My goal, peaking for the postseason, I needed to take, I ended up taking about five or six weeks off practicing for the club just to tr start training again, training so I could increase the demands of my training to get ready for playing. And luckily the captains and the coaches were so supportive and my teammates because it can be frustrating. You know, I go to all the practices and just like, oh, I'm not practicing even though like theoretically I probably could have, but I knew my body, I knew what it takes, when it takes, and luckily they gave me that trust and that was huge. And that allowed me to like fully buy into this, like, okay, I'm working really hard outside of practice to get ready for, for the club season. The first test was the US Open and I still didn't feel that great. And I was starting to get a little bit worried I just wasn't as fast. I couldn't create separation. I'm still getting fronted and I'm just like, I just can't go deep. And a little bit worrisome there. Going into the pro championships, I'm still feeling better. I'm starting to practice again. And they, coaches and captains um, have a, a great idea and they're just gonna play me and Gus every other point. So now I'm playing every other point, pretty much every other, every other because O-line, D-line. And this is great. I feel fantastic. I think I start to, really feel confident for the first time all season since the end, since the foot injury. And that's great because confidence is something that kills me. Like very confident, but I do sometimes doubt that. And I'm definitely not at my best when I'm not feeling confident. So men it's all mental out there. And I finally start to get my confidence back. We end up winning. We beat Chain Lightning on Universe. And that's an amazing, great feeling because that tournament was one of the hardest tournaments um, I've ever played. It's imagine like nationals, but just the top 10 teams. So very good. Feeling good about that tournament. Team's feeling good. And now it's time for the postseason. This year, we're going in as the one seed again. And they do this new thing, USAU, where they don't seed nationals according to rankings. They seed it according to like a drawing of different pools. Nobody really gets it too well. And it definitely has mixed reviews, mostly negative reviews. Anyways, what ended up happening was the way it got drawn, pool A, where we are, because we're the one seed, ended up getting the best two, three, and maybe four seed, the best two and three seed in each of their, their pools. So we got Bravo and Ring of Fire. And then it was like, oh damn, like we have a really tough pool. Pool Plant Nationals is important because me specifically and everybody wants the buy because playing a pre-quarter is a very demanding game and it's one game you can just sit so i was like oh that'd be so nice to get another buy then we only have to play one game each day 
Uh, as it was, pool play Thursday was not great for truck stop. We lost two universe point games back to back. And then all of a sudden we're like, damn, okay. From the one seed getting the buy. Now we're all of a sudden we're on the other side of the bracket and we have to play pre quarters versus chain. Who's like the fifth seed and they're really good. And we only beat them by one. So it's pretty much the worst possible day one outcome, not the worst. The silver lining for me personally is I'm back. I'm healthy. I'm feeling great. Um, we have 11 players on offense. So again, we're not playing too much, feeling fresh. And now it's like, did my entire idea of sitting out all those practices and resting, like, did it work? It's up to these four games. Pre quarters starts great. Uh, we play a fantastic game. We only turn it once as an O-line. We had some struggles in pool play with some turns and with some systems. And we end up, yeah, I think we just get broke once early and then hold, hold, hold. The problem was Chain was also holding. And I think it was like 10-9 where we pulled, um, we pulled Cole from the O-line and said, like, you got to go guard Brett. He's killing us. And I remember vividly, like, I was so pumped. I thought that was a great decision. And I just, like, go over to Cole and I say, go win us the game. Like, that was a, a I think that's on video. I, that was a really cool memory. So we'll get to that in a second. Anyways, O-line keeps holding, which is great. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm having a, a, a solid game, a, a return to form game, so to speak. But it happens to us. Everybody can have a good game just based on our offense comes down to it and guess what we finally break late and then at the end of the game cold jerk gets a layout block on brett to win us the game i i knew it i had a feeling it was going to happen so shout out cole for, for getting the job done there pre-quarters we play dig you've heard about this game crazy going into it before the chain game they asked the interview like oh like you excited for boston yeah excited for boston it's kind of like a little rivalry now in the adl I'm also from there for a year, maybe two years there. Yeah, so definitely looking forward to playing playing Dig. It's a weird, the wind picks up and it's just like kind of a cross up downwind and Dig comes out with a great strategy. They like are putting us on that sideline and then just like pulling all their players into the lane and poaching. And that strategy, like it really worked. They were putting a lot of pressure on our handlers. We like to reset the disc and move it, but we were fighting to get open. I think both of my turnovers at Nationals came in that game just because like, yeah, the pressure was high and there was just weird defensive looks that we weren't and I wasn't really comfortable with. So I thought they called an incredible game. We were up for a while and then they made like a three break run, including one where I'm just waiting. We turn it and I'm like, okay, they're going to huck to Orion. I know this. So I'm not even playing defense. I'm waiting for it. I see him go deep. I beat him to the spot. I box him out perfectly and he still roofs me. It was like, it was insane. That play, another vivid memory from Nationals. So that three goal run puts them up one and the disc. So I think we have to break twice to win it late. They march all the way down at, I forget what the score was, 13, 12 them or something. And they miss, they miss a throw in the, at the end zone line. And now I think we break there to tie it. And now we have a chance, maybe we hold and we go to universe after like a hold, hold situation. Universe comes and they work it all the way up the field. And if you haven't seen it, basically they throw a game winning goal that's contested strip. And we go to the observers and the observers say no strip, trucks ball. We get like a stall nine crazy catch to stay alive, Chuck. Then AJ throws it to fall on the goal line. And then there's another stall nine crazy throw, hand block catch, and truck stop miraculously is moving on. After the game, they see the slow-mo that they caught it in the end zone right before AJ caught it. And Dig puts the game under protest and we go back to the Airbnb and we're like, what is going on? Like, this is crazy. Like there's never been a game like this before. USAU says there's no calls, or no overturns after that. And Truck Stop has a second life. Definitely weird vibes at the Airbnb. 
But um, I remember the semifinal game the next night talking to one of the players on ring on the sidelines like, yes, yeah, it's, it's such a weird feeling, but all we can do is give you our best game. And that was a really fun game. Playing ring in semis was special. Semifinals, everybody's kind of at the complex, under the lights. It's a super, it's a meaningful game in Club Ultimate, the under the light semifinal. Luckily, semifinals is truck stops best round at nationals. We played almost a perfect game against Pony in 2022. Same thing against ring. You know, we only had one or two weird breaks, including just like a first throw, um, first throw away, and they put it in right there. But throughout the game, it was just kind of going our way. Our defense looked really good. Thomas Edmonds got this crazy block, which, which was amazing. And then down the stretch, I, was, I got a little bit greedy. Um, as I, I, as I was feeling it, so I threw some, some fun ones. I tried to throw this backhand blade to Johnny but it kind of got a little flat and they made a good play on it. Luckily they survived there. Earlier in the game, box is wide open and there's a blown switch and I just tried to throw him this fastball, but it kind of popped up and thank God it did because that was like an incredible play, a jump sky clap catch on two players. So Christian, you're welcome for throwing you a, a bad pass. I know you're wide open, but it, it worked out well in the end. Then coming down the stretch, yeah, a couple, a couple crazy ones. Um, on game point, I remember looking off Gus, and I didn't, I did not remember in real time that he got wide open on his second move, right as I'm looking away, and I end up just locking on to my boy Johnny Mox, of course, co-host, great friend, and throw him this back shoulder hook, and yeah. Saul almost gets it, but Johnny makes the play, and we are moving on to the championship. Super fun game all around, one of the best ones from Nationals. Championship game comes up, and the first half was pretty interesting. They just had a bunch of scrappy defenders. I'm so tired at this point. Like, that extra pre-quarter game crushes me. I don't even warm up. I'm like, I, I do not have a warm-up and a game in my legs, so I'm just like, watching warm-ups, jogging, doing my thing. And then I'm like, I'll just warm up the first couple points. <laughs> like, it was that bad. And I'm not the only one feeling like that. Everybody's tired. I think Taimon said he didn't sleep for two days. That happens at the end of the tournament. So I'm, I'm warming up the first couple points and getting the legs into it. And they're just throwing these scrappy defenders at me. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a long game. Then we finally, I think, go to half up. And then they're bringing in, in Johnny, of course, for the famous, the halftime intermission. Our, also at halftime, our coach shows up who had been in the hospital. He had a, a pretty bad leg injury, like getting away from a dog. So that was horrifying to hear. We all heard that morning, but he battled back and showed up at halftime. So shout out to crew for that. So there's a lot going on. Johnny's coming, our coach just came. We're in the national championship where we're actually up at half and Second half comes up and they definitely start to throw different looks at us. The Johnny's, he's a wild man, he's a genius. He's like making all these poaches. But luckily for me, I'm much more confident playing that like poachy smart game than getting open against like the scrappy defenders. So I started to find more space, open up a little bit, finally connect with a few players and then hit cold down the stretch on a, on a nice cut. And I've always wondered like what it would feel like when we won the national championship. And what happens is we get a turn. Thomas, another incredible block, one of the craziest ones you'll ever see. He's running past Pavel, not even looking, but puts his hand in the throwing lane and gets a hand block. It, it was sick. And then all of a sudden, we're on offense. When Truck Stops D-line's playing, we're on the sideline supporting, yelling, screaming, trying our best. But when they play offense, um, I just always go into the shade tent and relax. Like There's no need for extra instructions when they're on offense just let them play so i'm going to the shade tent johnny also comes to the shade tent so like we're just sitting there we're not talking and we're just kind of watching and we see the huck go up to aj and like i said i've always wondered what it would feel like when you know you finally win but this one was just like rip the band-aid off because it gets macked and musa comes in with a trailing edge catch i didn't see coming and then all johnny rushes i just follow johnny and go find Musa and AJ, and, and that was it. That's the first club championship. Immediately, that Sunday, 
that Sunday night, I have to fly back to Maine. I had such a busy season. I needed a quick break because I had Beach Worlds on the horizon and also a month long trip to China. So I had eight weeks out of DC. I went home, to, I went flew, flew back from California to Maine to recharge. Maine is where my, my, my Roxbury crew lives. Danny, Warren, Chad, you know, Stephanie, Sarah. That's the people I always go see. I get a little disc golfing in, I can breathe. I just kind of take that mental break. And just within four days, have to go right back to California for Beach Worlds, which is a little bit crazy because I get there and it's like a three hour practice and then a two hour meeting. And then the next day it's like another practice. And I'm, I'm looking around like, is this, this is a, a like, let's go to the beach. Let's, let's, you know, let's celebrate, you know, this, you know, but it was a pretty intensive tournament. I thought it was definitely going to be something else. Uh, the, the intensity ended up helping us. We won the gold, we played well, and the coaches really helped me become a better beach player, which is great. And they did a great job with the team, but it, we found the time to have fun and, and be as a team. I was just being dramatic, but this was kind of like a running joke throughout where it's like, oh, we have a two, we have two practices in one day. Like, hmm, okay, maybe, maybe no party, maybe no beach time, but uh, yeah, all in all, great time and really close game against Canada in the semifinals, a little bit nerve wracking. Um, yeah, I think it was like 10-10 and Ben threw this kind of hot up line to me. I was like, this is the tournament for me. I was like, if I miss this, I'm so exhausted running on sand, I'm not gonna be able to play any defense. So I was able to channel it, get, get the layout, I'm off. People are like, why are you wearing pants and, and the hoodie? I hate the sun. I, I don't mind the heat, but the sun kills me. So I'm, I'm, I'm out of the sun. I'm wearing Jimmy's jersey all tournament because my roommate, Thomas Edmonds, was supposed to bring mine. He forgot, sabotage. So now I don't have a jersey. So I'm asking first day, I get like Harper Garvey because he's playing on the mixed team, different time. I get his jersey, then I get a coach's jersey. Then Jimmy comes, he broke his finger at nationals, he can't play. So Jimmy gives me his jersey, so I rock the 23 and Jimmy all week, which was amazing. And yeah, we ended up, you know, we ended up getting great team time. And me, Johnny, Mox, Christian Boxley, Chris Kotcher, and Jimmy Mickle all squeezed in one room. I got the top bunk, Johnny and Christian on the bottom bunk, Jimmy and Chris on, they had some couches or uh, some couch cushions on the floor, but that's the vibe you get when you hustle an ultimate frisbee. Those are the best times in the world, though. It's not like we all want our own hotel space and we want the crazy five person in the room. So really fun week. The next day, I still am not done. I jump on a plane to go to Shanghai, where I do a 5,000 kilometer, 3,100 mile tour with Ivan, a local coach in China and we just do 22 clinics. Yeah, and that was crazy experience. I won't go into the details here because I'm doing a, a different video for that trip. And yeah, thank you for just listening to my journey in 2023 on kind of what it's like to live Ultimate Frisbee. I'll try, this is a good time. I can't say guaranteed, but if you shoot me a DM on Instagram or you have questions maybe here in the comments, I'm happy to to share some more and yeah much love again thank you so much YouTube you kind of made a career for me here um, when I wouldn't be able to do what I do without you and especially the Excel ultimate patrons and, and subscribers there so really um, appreciative to everybody who watches these videos and takes time to follow some of my content Hopefully I can continue to create Ultimate Frisbee stories and, and more things moving forward for y'all. So much love, that's 2023. Looking forward to my Hawaii trip early 2024. That'll be a nice recharge spot too. Peace.